What's going on dudes and dudettes? So yes, Derwin James, the star defensive player for the Chargers. Apparently he says he's going to report to training camp with or without a new contract. So that's always a positive thing that he's always thinking about team and football before he is thinking about the money and the contract. So I'm pretty sure it's gonna get done. I know GM Tom Telesco keeps talking about that it will get done pretty much before the season starts coming up soon in a couple months so hopefully that is true but yes yeah, definitely looking forward to a healthy Derwin James because that's always a good thing for the LA Chargers and the Lakers signed two players one that I said that they probably were going to sign first one is Javante McCoy who was like the 6'5-ish type of point guard shooting guard they signed him and then also Fabian White Jr who didn't really play all that much and all that well his stats are pretty low during summer league, but he does have, you know, really interesting measurables. Six eight, very athletic. Got better at shooting the three as well. So these both both of these guys are on exhibit ten contracts. So I don't I don't remember exactly what that meant and which like meant how long it, they would be on the team for and how long they are contracted for with the Lakers if they're just you know guys to come in during training camp to try to make the team or if they're already going to be in the South Bay, the developmental G League. So they never really know about these newer type of contracts that have finally come to light, but we'll see. It's definitely a better way to get more guys on to teams to be able to have a chance to at least make an NBA roster, which is always cool. And then a couple USC players were added to those watch lists that I mentioned for the other guys like Caleb Williams and Jordan Addison in the last video. So the tight end Malcolm Epps was named to the John Mackey watch list. So that's pretty cool for him, even though, you know, he was coming with a lot of, you know, praise last year from Texas and did okay. I think he ended up getting injured once he was starting to do better, but hopefully a full healthy season and should be a true finalist for that John Mackey award as a tight end. And then also for a Remington watch list from USC is the center Brett Nielsen, who I've had an up and down relationship with because he was a very highly talented guy coming out of high school. And I don't know, ever since he got the start at center, he's never really been the best guy in my opinion. I know there was a guy who came after him or yeah, came right after him in the next recruiting class and Justin Dietrich, who I always thought was better who they're actually getting some more playing time on like the guard position on the offensive line. So they're at least using them because they know how good and versatile he is. But for some reason, they won't give him the starting center job, which I don't understand. But, you know, at least he's still sticking around and not <clears throat> jumping ship to another school and trying to play for them to get, you know, his playing time in. So definitely happy about that. Then the Chargers signed a player from the USFL, which was like a like a pretty much a random league that was playing the past couple months for a couple ex NFL guys, CFL guys were all joining in. It's weird because they have that now, the XFL that Dwayne Johnson is going to be running pretty soon. I think that might be next year. So there's going to be a lot of opportunity, especially in the U.S., for guys to now play football. But who knows if they're going to get an opportunity? But at least this guy is getting one, Carlo Kemp. I believe he played at the University of Michigan as well and was pretty productive there, but had to go to the USFL, was productive as well in that league. So maybe the Chargers could find a diamond in the rough here or he's just another body for training camp you never knew. Then when it comes to, yes, remember I mentioned Peyton Manning and Eli Manning's nephew, Arch Manning, in the last video. Well, apparently I'm not the only one that has been thinking lesser of him. ESPN's recruiting has also decided to not have him as the number one overall quarterback on their system. And now they've jumped up USC's quarterback coming in 2023. Malachi Nelson is now their number one overall quarterback in that class, which just the first time on the fall, because I know there's other uh, recruiting sites on three and 247, some other stuff like that, that still have Manning as number one, but they said one of the big indicators is why they jumped up Nelson was because he was playing in seven on seven tournaments, went into the Elite 11 that the NFL Network does to get the top, you know, 20 best quarterbacks in the nation to duke it out 
have a competition and then whoever wins that competition ends up being usually one of the better quarterbacks out of the group but Manning never went to that he didn't do any seven on seven you know out of, out of the when they were out of school or out of playing the sport so I don't know why he didn't do it maybe he just thinks that name alone and he's gonna have a gigantic year his senior year I would not even be surprised if he doesn't even play more than half the year just because they don't want anything to happen to him injury wise but at least someone else has been paying attention and that's the, the mothership as a lot of people like to say ESPN so I'm not the crazy one here then Duke finally got their first round opponent in the Phil Knight Classic that they're going to be playing up there in Portland, Oregon. It's a nice little mini tournament of the teams like Florida, Gonzaga, Purdue, but they drew Oregon State in the first round. It's pretty nice because Duke could beat them and should beat them. Then the next round they get, I think it's Florida or Xavier, one of those, so he can still have a good opponent in the second round. And then if all things go true, it should be Duke and Gonzaga in the final or Duke and Purdue either way it should be a good final in the end for the Phil Knight Classic so definitely looking forward to that a nice little mini tournament for Duke to get them ready for the big time March Madness tournaments then when it comes to yes this crazy little thing I saw on Twitter I said what if the Nets just messed everything up and ended up asking for LeBron so you just trade LeBron for KD Kevin Durant to the Lakers and have LeBron and Kyrie rejoining in Brooklyn and then Anthony Davis and Kevin Durant in LA. I kind of like it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a 100% LeBron hater. He does bother me sometimes, but to get a guy like a Kevin Durant who is younger and considered one of the top two or three players in the NBA when he is healthy, I think it would be great, especially teaming him up with another unicorn like Anthony Davis. But I did hear that there were talks from ESPN that Kevin Durant could be in talks in a trade to go to Boston, which of course has to do with a team I dislike, and it could be like for Jalen Brown or something like that. So overall, Kevin Durant is either going to mess me up this summer or that's going to be no bother to me. So either way. Not looking forward to the news that Boston gets him, but that would be a crazy get for Jason Tatum for his future, because I know they're not going to trade Jason Tatum, the ex-Duke player. And it's just weird how he just jump ships the teams that embarrassed him because he lost. His Oklahoma City team was up 3-1 to one against Golden State Warriors when he was still with OKC that last year. Then he decides to join him, join Golden State that summer, kind of cheat his way to two championships and then now that I think yeah Boston this last playoff series beat them in the first round for nothing so of course he's gonna go to a team that he thinks dominates him and do that I don't know what's up with that guy but we'll see then five-star point guard shooting guard Isaiah Collier from Georgia apparently he knocked his teams down to a top four I believe it's USC UCLA Cincinnati and Michigan so the only real competition there, I don't think uh, Cincinnati really is. I don't know why he has them on there. Maybe they're offering him a bit more money. But yeah, every, all those other teams are good competition to get him. And hopefully he doesn't end up at UCLA because he does look like a pretty talented player. So hoping, hoping for him to go to USC he should be deciding pretty soon as well the next week or two. So that'll be interesting to see where he lands. Then a lot of people keep kept reporting that ex-Detroit Piston great Rasheed Wallace was going to end up joining the Lakers staff and joining the rookie head coach Darvin Ham. But I don't know, I never believed it because it never came from the Lakers officially and a lot of like the top reporters that cover the Lakers never really said anything. And it just found out today that he is not joining the team. He will be staying at the University of Memphis to help out Penny Hardaway out there. But it is kind of weird because I know Kevin Garnett can't really trust everything he says, but he says that if he were to coach, if Rasheed Wallace were to coach a player like Anthony Davis, he'd make him one of the top greatest players of all time or something like that. I think he said he'd be a really awesome coach for him. But 
I don't know, for some reason, I guess contracts or something couldn't be worked out. And I don't know, maybe the money is just better out there in Memphis, Tennessee, than it is out here in L.A. to be an assistant. But maybe he thinks he could get a main head coaching job at a college or maybe somewhere else. Never know. So we'll see how, what his future holds. And to finish off this video, he is <clears throat> Duke's incoming freshman Tyrese Proctor from Australia was in Asia during like the FIBA championships out there with his team from Australia and they were able to win the championship out there for their country um, the Asia Cup or something like that they were playing in so that's pretty good for him I know he wasn't throwing up the best stats overall but he was still playing out there and showing the good he can do and it's also a guy who's basically graduating high school early and coming to Duke this fall so he was actually a player supposed to come next season but he will be here this year so that'll be very interesting to see what he can do and bring to the team and he's already playing against a lot of veteran older guys in those FIBA world games so we'll see what he can bring like I said so yes thanks for watching people like and subscribe comment down below let me know what y'all think have a great rest of your day bye bye don't